Hello, and welcome to the eighth and final session of the UVM Basics course here on Verification Academy. I'm Tom Fitzpatrick, Strategic Verification Architect here at Siemens EDA, and in this session, we're going to cover UVM reporting. UVM includes a built-in messaging system to allow you to specify messages of a particular severity so that you can see better what's going on inside of your system. So in its simplest form, it's simply a call to a function to display a message. In this particular case, we're using a macro. As we'll see, the macros provide some additional information about where the function was actually called. So the severity is specified by the macro that we call, in this case, info for an informational message. There's also warning, error, and fatal. The first argument to the messaging macros is the originator or the ID. This could be the name of the company that's supplying the IP that's providing the message. It could be the initials of the engineer who created it. It could be whatever it is that you need it to be to indicate some useful information about how this message was created. The message itself is simply a string. It can either be a hard-coded string or it can be the result of a $S format call or some other function that produces a string so you can embed variable information in it as well. And then for info messages, as we'll see, there's also a verbosity which allows you to filter certain messages based on how important they are to you. When you call UVM info from within your code, the simulation will produce a message where the first piece of information is the severity. Then it will show you the file and the line number. And again, this is information that the use of the macro provides, the time at which it was called, the hierarchical path to the component that actually called it, and then we replicate the ID so you can actually see where the message came from and also the message itself. So this gives us a standard mechanism for getting useful information out of the system in a regular way so that we can then go look at these messages and understand what they mean. So the macros themselves consist of UVM info, warning, error, and fatal. These are pretty standard severity levels, if you will. The UVM info macro, in addition to the ID and the message, which they all take as arguments, has the verbosity argument, which we'll talk about in a minute. These can all be called either from UVM components, from UVM sequences, or also from system Verilog modules. And they will all create messages that indicate to you what the information is and where in the system it was called from. So the verbosity is controlled for UVM info messages by specifying the third argument. And the value is specified using an enum. UVM none means that the message will always appear. And then you can add filtering information. So UVM low, medium, high, and full. So the way that it works is from the command line, you specify the verbosity, in this case, UVM low. And the message will be output if the verbosity is less than or equal to the verbosity level you set on the command line. You can also specify this in your code, but then to change the verbosity, you have to recompile. So we actually recommend setting the verbosity level from the command line. The messages themselves have the verbosity level associated with them, so you can control the filtering. So if you have information that is really necessary only in very isolated cases when there is something really complicated going on, you can specify UVM full as the verbosity for that particular message. And then if you need to see it, you can run a simulation where you set plus UVM verbosity to UVM full, and then you'll see all of the messages that could be printed out. And you can filter those out by setting verbosity to be somewhat lower. Typically, we use UVM low for regular messages. And then if you really want to just run with nothing, you can use UVM none on the command line, and then no messages will be printed out. Errors, warning, and fatals can't be filtered out in this way. In addition to setting the verbosity, there are other actions that you can take. So we'll talk about those here. So from UVM top, you can set report severity action. So that means that for a given severity, you will take a particular action. And the higher suffix means that this will apply to everything in the hierarchy from UVM top on down. It means everything in your UVM system in this particular example. So what this is saying is that for UVM info messages, the action that we will take is UVM no action, which means to suppress all of the messages. So all of the messages that get created get passed into what we call the report handler in UVM. 
And these methods actually tell the report handler how to process those messages, in this case, to just suppress the message and not pass it on. You can also control the action based on the ID. So if we use the set report ID action higher, we can specify the ID. And in this case, the action UVM no action will suppress all messages with the ID equal to MG. Some common actions that you can take. UVM no action will do nothing, i.e. suppress the message. UVM display will send the report to standard output. That's the default. UVM log will send a report to a file. UVM count will stop the simulation when the max count is reached. This is the default for a UVM error, along with displaying the message. UVM exit will finish the simulation immediately, which is the default for a fatal. And UVM stop will call $stop. So to redirect reports to a file, we can open a file using the $f open call. So we'll specify a writable file called my.log. Then from UVM top, we will set report default file higher to use that file. So that means that's a hierarchical call. So everything from UVM top on down will use that file for its default messaging. Then we will set report severity action higher to say that every UVM info will display to standard out using UVM display and will also output to the log file. So each of the actions is represented by a bit mask so you can bitwise or them together. And in this case, UVM display and UVM log will both happen. So we'll display to standard out and also put it in the log file that we just created. So the hierarchical methods, because they rely on the hierarchy, have to be called after the build phase. So doing them in start of simulation is a good idea. So to summarize all of the sessions on UVM here, UVM is targeted to allow you to create reusable verification environments and reusable verification IP where components communicate at the transaction level to allow you to communicate with your DUT and send stimulus in and get responses back. By separating the tests from the test bench and making the test bench configurable, the tests become targeted to configure your test bench to specify the differences from one simulation to another. What sequences you're going to generate, what coverage you might want to collect, what specific components you might want to override, things like that. So you can have a library of tests that all use the same reusable verification environment where that verification environment is made up of a series of components from a package or a library where you pick out the specific components that you want for your particular test and then run it. If we take a closer look at a typical environment, you'll see that inside of the agent, as we've covered before, we have a sequencer communicating to a driver. The sequencer is responsible for generating the stimulus, sending it to the driver. The driver converts that into pin wiggles to the DUT. The monitor recognizes those transactions and communicates them out through the analysis port up through the agent to the rest of the environment. So the subscribers are things like scoreboards or coverage collectors. So most of the communication is at the transaction level in the environment, and that provides a useful level of abstraction so we can interact with components at the level that we think about the problem. So we can think about reads and writes, we can think about sending packets, or whatever the typical transaction level communication is for our particular application that's represented by the sequence items and the transactions that we've talked about. All of these components are reusable because they all have similar interfaces, everything from the constructor arguments to the use model for connecting them to other similar components, and that gives us additional flexibility. The stimulus itself can be layered, so you can have sequences that generate transactions and you can have sequences of sequences. And you can also have what we call virtual sequences, which will enable you to control the activity of multiple sequences in your simulation. So that's it for the basic UVM class. There is an advanced UVM class as well on Verification Academy, and I recommend that you take a look at that as well. Thank you very much for your time.